Praise be to Orihime's giant jokes. I swear, every time I see them, I get a little bit happier in the side. And don't you lie saying you're saying that. This time, so that's like you are lying to yourself if you don't believe that. Now, this chapter of Bleach, I don't know, but for me, I was fucking pissing myself the most of it, which is surprising because out of everything I've pretty much talked about, all the mangas and all that, I think Bleach probably has like the least comedy in it. And I don't know why I was just in, I was in. For a whole chapter, I'm like there going, oh, me ribs like that. It's, you see, like, fucking, like, they got, like, a fucking giant almost fucking cannon, like, going out there. Where Ichigo, Chad, and Orihime are now about to go to the Soul Palace, which is interesting enough because it's like, are uh, even Chad and, like, Orihime even prepared? Are they even on that level to even fight, you know, what's there at the Soul Palace? Like, you know, we've got, you know, fucking Juha back there. We've got fucking Uliu. Like, we've got a bunch of crazy people. And it's like, one of the most important things in this chapter was find out about fucking Inoue Clover. Chad's asking, like, oh, what do you think about this? Like, reveal is like, well, if that was me, I'd say, you know, those things are freaking beautiful. And it's like, I can't believe Urahara actually freaking chose her to actually wear something like that. And I was like, yo, that's freaking... And then, out of, ne out of nowhere, freaking Yorichi just comes out with a hand like that, puts him in the boots, it's like... And she's, like, there complaining, saying, what well, kind of, like... She showed a bit too much. I'm like, what? Like, Yorichi putting a fucking, like, smack down on fucking Ichigo, saying, a girl would be happy. It's like... It's like, come on, fucking Ichigo. Like, you bitch. <laughs> just take... Accept them. And it's like... And there's been wondering, like, where what, Yorichi has been for a while. And it's like... We find out that she's like got a bunch of these vials and stuff, like this, and she was like, she was to investigate the distortion between you know Quincy's uh, and the human world and soul society, and she because of this, she's like she was able to find a quality of moving energy large enough to connect two worlds. So this is how they're able to get from you know soul palace to you know soul society and you know the human world, Quincy's, and that's pretty much their part of the chapter where they're now about to you know. Get started. It's like it's only a one shot ch chance though to get there. It's like you can only use it once because it isn't like you know when they first traveled to um, Soul Society and able to get in there since it was made by special you know materials and Urahara only pretty much came up with this as advice thanks to Mayuri. And then the second part of the chapter was like you know we get to see you know uh, Ikaku and we get like go against you know Bambiet a zombie form and it seems like you know where the the spears that she, she shoots aren't bombs but it's like if if it's if you're touched by the spears it explodes pretty much and we find out yeah she's pretty much dead she has no conscience like she's just a mindless story she, I love like she was just now about to put freaking like a hell of a bunch of like freaking like explosions right on Ikaku's head I know something as well when she stabbed it's like notice that Ikaku had blood on him I'm wondering if actually he's air uh, like if perhaps the zombie well dude I should say is like is actually able to like manipulate people with other people's blood, uh, blood that she's infected, so maybe Ikaku could turn into a zombie. Like, I'm just saying, like, that's what I noticed there. Like, who knows for that ch uh, chance? But it's like, pretty much you can't do anything against Bambi. It's like, you can ch cut off her uh, limbs and stuff, but she won't die because of the freaking zombie. Shit. So I'm guessing, like, the zombie, you got to kill the zombie dude to pretty much take care of it. And it's like, I was just disgusted saying, like, oh, Oh, I just, uh, like, her face that time when she died made me so wet. It's like, please stop it, you sicko. You was, like, getting hard off that shit. It's like, I just love how, like, at the end, freaking Mayuri just comes out as, like, a giant son just going, ooh, that's an interesting power. He's pretty much like this, like, come at me, bro. <laughs> Literally like that. It's just like, what, so now we're going to have Mayuri versus a zombie, the zombie dude? I'm kind of curious to see where this fight's going to go because, like, what can really the zombie do do? Like, apart from, like, what, you're going to uh, possess Ikaku and, like, oh, like, now, like, um, Mayuri's going to go against, like, zombie Bambiette or something like that? Like, that'd be cool because, like, the zombie dude can't do anything pretty much on his own. He has to have, like, possessing other people. And so, unless we've got an Umichiki, you know, uh, Ikaku and Mayuri versus, you know, these two, then, I don't know, it just seems like it's going to be a pretty easy fight. Uh, overall, I just had a blast with this chapter. I... It's been just so good reading Bleach lately. I don't know. It's like the last two chapters just really just been picking up for me. It's like it's so much better pacing than what it originally was. And, you know, personally, I've just been enjoying that. But let me know what you think in the down below. What do you think about this Bleach chapter? But that's all for me. I want to thank you very much for watching. As always, remember, I'll see you guys next time. And remember, strap that panda.